For Iron News, I am Tofumi Talabi. Florence Swedo of ex oil Governor Abiola Chimobi has lashed out at Governor Shoyi Makinde for how his government treated her husband in the late one month of his illness. The visibly angry widow denied ever contacting Makinde or anybody in his government for any kind of support during the illness of her husband, which eventually resulted in his death. So please, the press are here. We never had any risk to the governor, to the state government. I never dialogued with them, I never confronted them, I never sent them a word. Because I didn't know it was necessary for me to send official messages that my husband was hospitalized. She spoke while receiving a delegation of governors who were at the Oluyole residence to commiserate with the family and pay their respects. The delegation was led by the Oyo Deputy Governor, Mr. Rauf Olanio. The former first lady who acknowledged she was not supposed to talk said she decided to break her silence since her husband fell ill about a month ago and died last Thursday because of misgivings emanating from the government. And I'm glad the deputy governor of the state is here because I need to put some records here. It's the first time I'm going to make any public announcement or make a statement ever since my husband got ill after he died. I opened the papers this morning and I saw the while appealing to the government to stop what she described as dirty politics, she said her late husband was for peace and served the state for eight years, making him deserve better treatment even in debt. The governor of Oyo State never called me, never sent a condolence message. My husband was hospitalized for one month. What politics are we playing? Please. Life is short. Well, I'm a Christian. My husband was in most days. We should all let the fear of God guide us in whatever we are doing. I think what he's done today. So whatever he does, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me as his wife. I'm his widow. I'm going to mourn and respect my husband's wishes. And that was what I did today. Led him to rest peacefully. I didn't want any controversy. Everything I read in the papers, I just swallowed it. I swallowed it and I let it go. So please, the press are here. We never had any risk to the governor, to the state government. I never dialogued with them. I never confronted them. I never sent them a word. Because I didn't know it was necessary for me to send official messages that my husband was hospitalized. My husband is dead and he served this, this state for eight years. Eight good years. What are we talking about? The deputy governor is there. He did not send me a text message. I don't have your number. I cannot pick numbers I don't know. So please let's stop playing dirty politics. I'm so sorry, Your Excellency, if I got worked up, but I need to because they are putting my husband's name in the mud, and I want him to rest in peace. Let us pray. The quick intervention of Kano Governor Umar Ganduje, who quickly called for prayers for the repose of the soul of the late governor, put the matter to rest. That's the news for now. For more updates, visit www.thestreetjournal.org. Subscribe to Iron TV on YouTube and follow us on our social media platforms at Iron TV. For Iron News, I am Tiffany Talabi.